Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays Confection. I'm Greg. Today I'm driving across country, all the way up to Syracuse, New York, so you can finally hear... Hi, I'm Craig at Hercules Candy, and we're going to make hard candy. There's so much to know about candy making, no one person can know it all. So I travel the country, and I see other candy makers, and I invite you to travel with Greg as we go to see Hercules Candy in Syracuse, New York. Hercules Candy is located in Syracuse, New York, and Steve and Terry and Craig, who's off camera right now, run the place and they make wonderful candy. And during our Kickstarter campaign, we said we'd make a joint video and we never thought we'd hit that level, but this is the video, folks. And we went up there, they know something about making hard candy, but not about making image candy, and I know absolutely nothing about making chocolate. So we thought we'd trade skills. I arrive in Syracuse and the GPS takes me up a lovely street. And it points me to a lovely residential house with a sign that says Hercules Candy out front. I guess I didn't know what to expect. I'd seen their videos, but I didn't realize it was in the basement of a residential house. They're going to move soon, so I sort of feel lucky I got to see this old tradition where they've been making candy since the 1930s. The basement is the factory, the ground floor is the showroom, and they live upstairs from where they make the candy, just like the Shimps at Shimps Confectionery. I've never made image candy in a kitchen from the 30s, so I had to figure out what they had. They had a pot to cook it in, a table to pour it on and let it cool, a hook to pull it on, and a heating hood to keep it warm. It looks like they had everything, but like all things, this equipment's going to be different than what I'm used to, so let's see what we can do. We were both prepared to take notes, Terry more than me. She had her little notebook ready, and I had my notes made for them already drawn out for this project. I hope it made it a little easier. Before I go any further, I have to state an element of fact. Steve is a superhero. Superheroes have superpowers, and Steve's is handling corn syrup. I use ladles, I use cups, I transfer it in various ways, and some of it always ends up on the floor. He takes his bare hands, plunges it into the bucket of corn syrup, and moves it without dripping with his bare hands into the pot. I have no idea how he does this. Take my word for it. Steve is a superhero. This beautiful copper pot takes the sugar up to 310 degrees quickly. And Steve and I talk about candy making, and I discover we have a difference of experience. For him, making hard candy is not something you do in the summer. It gets too sticky. And for me, I'm from Florida. It's practically summer year-round. If we hadn't figured out ways around making candy in the summer, we wouldn't be in business. Steve adds the flavor, stirs it in, and then the pot goes down to the marble candy cooling table, a four-inch thick marble table. I've never actually worked on marble before. You can't control its temperature, so it does what it wants to do. Unlike my candy cooling table, and if it gets too hot, it'll just stay that way until it cools down or until you ice it down. To keep the mixing of colors familiar to me, I brought a whole stack of my little wooden spoons with me to mix the colors in. Oh, it's cooler than in Florida. The air temperature in this room might be 65, and I'm used to working at 75. Everything's cooling off a lot faster than normal, so I gotta work fast to add the color into the candy. And we do our three sections, our dark orange for the skin, our light orange for the middle, and our clear that'll become the white for the pith of the orange. This is the place I normally add citric acid. Terry, Steve, and I decide not to. You see, citric acid can behave very badly when exposed to marble. Marble and citric acid can break down and produce carbon dioxide. In fact, dissolving marble dust or chips into sulfuric acid is how they made seltzer water, or the carbonation for seltzer water, back in the early days, and you can find out more about that on our video about how to make an egg cream. We don't want to damage this, so we don't use the citric acid, but that's okay. It may be a bit sweeter than our normal orange, but it's going to be delicious because we're flavoring it with pure orange oil, just the way we do at Lofty Pursuits. I cut the sugar into its three color blocks, and Terry and Steve start flipping them over like experts. I guess they are. I know there have been jokes made by these guys about how tight the space is down there when there's only three of them. Well, there are six today. You can see four on camera, and there are two more just coming to watch and to help out.
Steve starts the batch on the hook. He's pulling it to fold in air bubbles. When you fold in air bubbles into candy like this, it stops being amber and it starts becoming white. That's because these little air bubbles reflect light beautifully. And we need a very white candy for the pith of the orange. Now what's surprising me here is that we actually made this work. This room is so much colder than I'm used to, not as cold as they're used to, and I have to work much faster than normal for me. We need to get this thing off the hook and still be warm enough to do the next couple of stages in the process. At Lofty, I'm used to working with a heating table to keep the candy from cooling too fast. But the traditional way to do it is a heating hood. I never had that opportunity to work with one when I was learning because we didn't have a gas source in the building we were working with. We had to deal with electrical heat. A heating table is a very large area that is one temperature and it tapers off very quickly as you get off that area. A heating hood has a gradual taper from the back where the heat source is to the front where you're working. This posed some challenges for the type of image candy that I'm used to making, but ends up being a huge advantage for ribbon candy, and hopefully I'll show that to you in another video. Terry and I start cutting the candy down. The light orange is going to be the triangles in the center of the orange, and we need six parts for the design that I do. She takes three, I take three, we even them out, and then we have to shape them into the triangles and cool them off. And in this environment, the cooling them off is not the problem. Steve knows how the candy cools in his shop. He comes over and starts flipping the candy. I'm used to flipping it because the bottom's warm and the top's cold. But in this case, the bottom and top on one side are cold, and the bottom and top on the other side are hot, and he's got to flip it in a different way. It's all different. Everybody's shop has its idiosyncrasies, and Hercules Candies is no different. But I gotta say, it's a lot of fun to play with the old equipment. Steve earns his stripes by putting stripes in between the pith of the orange uh, slices, and we've put in the last slice on the first half, and the first half of the image candy is done. The second half he assembles by himself and we are able to put both halves together and end up with the core of the orange. Steve keeps the orange center moving so that it won't go flat while I pull out the white candy into the outer layer of the pith and we wrap it around the orange slices. We repeat the technique we did with the white candy on the orange rind and we end up with a beautiful outer layer. Then the log is rolled for a bit and we want to take the log into rods and we pull it down, we pinch it off and we stretch it out using gravity as our aid. If you ever make it to Tallahassee, please visit us at Lofty Pursuits. We're right off I-10 here in Tallahassee. And if you can't make it, you can still buy our candy. We made a batch of this orange and it's in our citrus mix. And you can get that at our website, www.pd.net. If you're ever in Syracuse, New York, you've got to check out Hercules Candies. Their chocolates are amazing, their hard candies are wonderful, and it's always good to have colleagues in the field that you like. Everybody's changing positions all the time so that everyone can have experience at each step of the process. The log is being rolled to keep it round. Steve is pulling it out into the uh, lengths without distortion. This is the hard part of this project. And he's cutting it off into rods. Terry and other people, and me at some point, end up rolling the logs to keep them cool and round until they are hardened. Which, once again, isn't very hard in this environment. You can't tell. I'm a little jealous. It's hot here in Florida. The candy came out great. Sometimes if you over pull or under pull the candy, 
or if there's too much stretching and twisting involved, it becomes hard to cut. But this candy's cutting beautifully. And I cut the first couple of rods, and then Steve takes over. And he starts learning the process like everybody who's ever learned this technique has to. It's not always as easy as it looks. Don't worry, he'll get his revenge when he tries to teach me how to fill a chocolate mold. And I thought that would have been easy. I was wrong. And look at how much faster he is after a few dozen rods to cut. And Terry did a great job. She picked this up in no time at all. And then we were done. And we headed upstairs and I went out towards my car with everyone else helping to carry my gear and there was somebody waiting outside. Apparently he'd seen the live stream and he wanted to come by and get some of the hard candy. The first person to try it. Thank you for watching this video. We want to thank the Hercules Candies for their huge hospitality. It was a wonderfully fun trip and we really enjoyed it. And if you ever make it up to Syracuse, please make sure you visit them. Their new store looks like it's going to be great. And if you ever make it to Tallahassee, visit us. We're located right off I-10 on the Thomasville Road exit. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Make sure you turn on notifications. We started to do live streams, and we don't tend to store them, so you can't see them later. Also, watch us on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. And we do constant updates. You can see what we're doing all the time. Thank you again for watching. See you with the next video.